So the other night, me and my girl were sitting around watching a movie, and she brought up the question, like, how many guns do you really need? I'm like, well, duh, that's a stupid question, as many as I can possibly afford. She's like, no, 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 not, like, with your YouTube channel, like, with all those extra things taken away, like, collecting, YouTube channel, stuff like that gone, like, let's pretend you had a constraint where you could only have exactly what you need. What guns do you actually need? And what would they be? I'm like, you know, that's a really good video topic, especially for people just starting out. Like, they don't have collections of guns. They haven't been through the ringers. They haven't really found what they like. What do you suggest they absolutely need to have? So here we are. Let's get into it. So I recommend three guns minimal. That would be a pistol, a shotgun, and a rifle. And what I recommend for each one of those, you know, that we'll get into this. So for my rifle, my go-to rifle is a SCAR-17. I mean, this hits everything I want to do extremely well. And you don't have to get something that expensive. Like, I'll be the first to admit it. I don't like AKs because of the price point they come in at. Like when people are like, an AK is the best rifle, and I look at them and I'm like, you're telling me between the budget of $700 and what, up to $1,500, you cannot buy a better rifle than an AK-47? Like now you're starting to convince me you should be drinking from a sippy and wearing a helmet. Like there are far superior platforms in that price range compared to the AK-47. But pushing that aside, like... Actually speaking, no. The AK-47 isn't a bad rifle. And when these were 300 bucks, I was a huge fan. I used to tell people I get over twice the projectile for half the price. What kind of bargain is that? Your little AR-15 can't bring that kind of bargain to the table. The point is, it's not so much on the rifle you're selecting. It's how you get to know the rifle. Like... Forget about an AK. Look at a Lever Action 3030 or an SKS or an M14 or something. Just a rifle. And that, was, and that is what makes the SCAR special. Because I fell in love with this so much and I shot it so much and I know this rifle through and through. Like me and these, this rifle go together like peas and carrots. And I've tried to replace this rifle several times. My first attempt was this rifle right here. Now I had unfortunately did this during the gun panic and I couldn't get most of the parts I wanted to get. So it wind up turning into basically like a national match configuration. And that's not what I had in mind. It was supposed to be like around seven and a half, eight pounds, A2 system with a 20 inch barrel. And the idea was, is I was gonna replace the scar with it. Well, after it went to National Match Configuration, it winded up weighing the exact same amount as the SCAR. And if I'm going to carry a heavy rifle, I'm going to shoot a 30 cal. I'm just going to do that. Like, I'm not going to pick a 223 that weighs the same amount as my SCAR 17. This was supposed to have a National Match Upper Receiver because I can just zero this for 100. And with 55 grain ammo, I don't need to touch the sights. Not even out to 300 yards. But if I want to... I can go to my dope card, dial in the shot exactly, and make a precision shot. Other than that, like just quick shots, all the way up to 300 yards, I don't have to screw with my sights. So that was the first failure at replacing the scar. The next failure was the MLP. I had totally underestimated how heavy those SOCOM barrels were, especially with this quad rail on here. Right now, this is like a pound lighter than my SCAR because there's not an optic on there. Once I put an optic back on there, no, this is going to weigh more than the SCAR. And why would I pick something that weighs more than the SCAR and shoots that small of a projectile? I'm just not going to do it. If I'm already going to be up around 10 pounds, I'm going with my SCAR 17. Like I said, it would be very hard for me not to take this rifle. It has huge disadvantages. It only has a 20 round magazine. The ammunition and mags are stupid heavy. But I know this rifle through and through. And again, I wanted to make a lighter rifle that I would ultimately just get to know and that would be my go-to rifle. But I haven't been able to do that yet because every time I try making a rifle, it comes out to the exact same weight as the SCAR. And if it's gonna be the exact same weight as the SCAR, 
I might as well carry a 308. I mean, why not, right? So what you want out of your long gun or your rifle, obviously lightweight. You want it as lightweight as possible because if that's your go-to rifle and you have to carry that for a distance, rifles get heavy fast. Even just carrying this a couple of miles while I'm deer hunting, you just start to notice the difference. I'll put it on my sling and I'll start putting my arm down here and holding it like this, plus supporting the sling. This way my arm's fully extended, plus I got my sling on there, and that's the only way I can carry it for a long period of time. I'll even have to take my hands off my pistol grip and rest my hand up here for a while because of the angle my wrist is at over a long period of time that gets really sore, or I have to hold it like this. Trying to hold it like this or just resting it off the single point sling, it's too heavy. I can't do it, I'm freaking really, 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 really sore. So you want to pick something as lightweight as possible, but will still hit your needs. You don't want to go with a five pound rifle, but you can't hit shit with it. You still got to be able to smack those targets. So lightweight's very important. Robust sighting system. I have seen way too many firearms with like a $30 red dot on it or like those cheap ass Magpul plastic flip up sights. And I'm like, that's what you would honestly depend your life on. Like everything goes belly up, everything's sideways. Shit's just crazy and you're gonna depend your life on a $30 red dot or some plastic ass flip up sights. No man, you wanna go out of your way and get a decent sighting system. Now obviously if you don't have hundreds and hundreds of dollars to spend on glass, don't underestimate an actual like open sight. Now I would recommend an A2 sighting system but these are complicated and there's a big learning curve. The newer style flip up that the military uses is much more intuitive. Like it says right on there what your range is. The zeroing card tells you exactly what to do. They got a line where to put it when you zero. This is a very, very robust system and it's intuitive. It literally has the range right on there. Spin your little dial to how far you're shooting at and start making shots. That will save you from spending like a grand on some glass. Now, if you got the money to go on glass, don't cheap out on it. You want to get the primo stuff. I personally choose ACOG just because it's it's got a lot of fail safes in it. So it's powered by this fiber optic tube. Then there's a piece of tritium in there. And then the glass itself is etched. That's three fail safes. Some ACOGs even have iron sights on top of this. It's four fail safes. Plus I even got a backup iron sight. And even this gun, just with the backup iron sight, is very effective. Again, it's got a BDC wheel, so you just dial in the range you want to shoot at, and you start making shots. But you don't have to spend that kind of money on glass, honestly. Like this backup sight right here, which, if you go to my affiliate links in the description, there is a link on my Amazon page to this sight. That is a good backup sight. I wouldn't even call, I'd call that a primary sight. Like it's got a BDC on it and everything. That one is... Mm. Good to go. Strongly recommend that one. This thing is a beast. It rides around in my trunk. It hasn't been broken yet. It even outlasts an aim point. The aim point took a shit. This did not. So, robust sighting system. I recommend the highest capacity possible. Now, again, what's way more important than capacity and everything else is that you know that rifle. You shoot that rifle every single time you go to the range. Even if it's just for a couple of shots. Just so you can figure it out, get a good feel for it, know how it's going to react in all different conditions. Uh, for example, I froze my scar once. I took it out because it was in the trunk. It was like 20 degrees out. I took it in the house and then I took it right back outside after I had showed the person. And the firing pin actually froze to the carrier. That's something you got to know about your guns. Like, Use them all the time. Know them in and out. Like, you really, really want to know your primary rifle very well. And again, like I said, like, this is my go-to rifle. I want to replace it. I do because it's a tank and it's heavy. But every time I try to replace it, the rifle I build that's supposedly going to replace it winds up being damn near the exact same weight. So, well, then I might as well just go with a 30 cal. 
again, I totally underestimated how heavy these barrels are and how heavy this fore end is. If I were to do it all over again, well, I'm going to do it all over again, but I need to figure out something else because this setup just didn't work. All right, so we got the long gun down. Now, what about a shotgun? The shotgun, the most important thing above everything else is that it fits you properly. Let me grab a tape measure real quick. So with your shotgun, what you wanna do is you wanna bring your arm up, make a 90 with it, and then hook your finger. You wanna measure the distance from right here to your finger. That's how long you want your length of pull. What the length of pull is, is the distance from the back of the stock to the trigger. For example, my length of pull is 12 and a quarter. This one is 14 and a half. This isn't even gonna come close to fitting me. If I were to buy this shotgun, I would have to throw it on the bandsaw and knock off two inches on the stock. Because with a shotgun, having a proper fit, is a night and day difference with how you can control the recoil. And that's extremely important with a shotgun because obviously they recoil. But the actual shotgun itself, it doesn't really matter what you pick. I usually go with like a Mossberg line and something in the tactical because I know I'm going to have to replace the stock. Your standard shotgun length of pull is like 13 and a half to like 15 inches. All of which is too long for me, so I'm going to have to throw a new stock on here and a plastic stock on a wood hunting shotgun just looks goofy as shit. So I always get like some sort of parkerized one with a plastic pump because I know I'm gonna have to throw on like the Magpul stock to make it fit me properly. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh my God. That was lame. I thought it would have like exploded into pieces. Right? Other than the fit, it really doesn't matter. I mean, if it's a shotgun, it's a shotgun. You just want something in 12 gauge that fits you properly, especially in Wisconsin because everybody has 12 gauge ammunition in their house. And you just never know. You may find yourself in a position where you have to scavenge that ammo and actually shoot it. And you can't do that if you don't have a gun to shoot it out of. So make sure you get a 12 gauge and make sure it fits you properly. Other than that, it really don't matter whatever it could be a double barrel it could be a pump action it could be a semi-auto i recommend something more like the maverick 88 home security because it's got high capacity it's like 200 bucks and you can throw on the stock that will fit you properly if you have a shorter stature like me and then you're good to go a shotgun you can hunt small game with it you can hunt big game with it you can defend yourself with it like they are so versatile however they're pretty niche if I had to pick between a shotgun and a rifle, I would pick a rifle all day long. Every day of the week, I would pick a rifle. Yeah, it does have some disadvantages over the shotgun, but if I'm not forced to run that shotgun, no, I'm going rifle. Now, let's pretend everything goes sideways and you have to scavenge ammo. You're going to find 12-gauge ammo. There is 12-gauge ammo probably in your neighbor's house. There may not be rifle ammo, but there will be 12-gauge ammo. So it's good to have a shotgun, learn how to use it, should you be put into a situation where you have to use it, you're already comfortable behind you, it already fits you properly, all you have to do is get ammo. All right, for pistol. The only thing that matters is will you carry it or not carry it? I screwed up. My first time I bought a pistol, I had watched way too many tactical training videos and I thought minimum I would need like a Glock 19 with like four or five extra magazines on me. So I bought an FNX 45 Tactical. I bought four magazines. I tried to carry that. That whole package is like seven pounds. It's damn near the exact same weight as this rifle right here with four magazines in the pistol. Totally not practical, but I didn't know. I watched a bunch of YouTube videos and I'm like, yeah, yeah you got you got to have a Glock and you got to have at least a couple extra magazine. You got to do it inside the waistband. I bought all that shit. Dude, I can't carry it. It's too much. Like I carried it for maybe like a half of a day and I threw my freaking hip out. I had to actually go to a light touch therapist to get my shit back in line because I was carrying seven pounds on my freaking belt. I'm not a cop. I don't have a belt that is this thick. I have a standard stylish belt. And when you start putting some weight on there, dude, it totally shifts your hips. Not cool. 
You want to get something you can actually carry. I'd recommend something small. At least five shots. I'd probably, I wouldn't go with a Derringer. I think that's a little extreme. I would go with something that at least has five shots. It's lightweight. It's small. You can carry it. It's not terribly uncomfortable. A nice little revolver. This is a great option. Just something like, these are actually pretty light. Yeah, they got a goofy shape. Because of the cylinder being wide in that, it kind of hurts to carry. So then you could go with something like this. Like a little XDS and 45. These are nice and flat. They don't dig into your side. You can actually carry this for a decent amount of time. And you can even pocket carry it. It's right in the old back pocket. It's about the same thickness of a wallet anyway. And then if you need it, it's right there. Now I understand I'll probably get flack for this. Because there is... A relatively large group of people that believe that, no, with your pistol you want to make sure you got maximum firepower, you know, have that 33 round happy stick, like three or four normal magazines, plus your Glock 19, a tourniquet, a med kit. It's just not practical for me. I'm not going to carry that shit. If you can, that's great. If you can carry it, do it. I can't. You get up to like five pounds, seven pounds of gear inside my waistband that's just too much for me now a standard pistol yeah i can do that i'm fine with that so get something that you're actually going to carry go small go lightweight forget about the capacity usually in a self-defense situation you're looking at three rounds fired yeah that would really suck to only have say maybe five rounds and you're in one of those crazy unexpected everything's different situations and you have to fire like 19 rounds because that happens. But they're the exception. They're not the rule. The rule is three rounds. Yeah, that would suck being in that. I mean, but is it realistic? I mean, what are the odds you're going to get into a gunfight? Practically non-existent. What are the odds you're going to get into a gunfight and need a pile of ammunition? It's realistically not going to happen. Unless you're a police officer or a security guard or something that you're marked as a target already... The statistical probability of something like that happen is extremely low. Now, you can plan for the exception, not the rule. That's fine. I'm not telling you what you should do. I'm telling you what I did, and I failed at, and I've learned from. What I did, and I failed at, is I was planning for the exception. An extreme gunfight, in the dark, lots of ammunition expended. So, a uh, tack light, tourniquet, several magazines, a full-size combat handgun... I was bloated for bear. Yeah, that lasted about a day. And all that shit came off me, and now it's usually something like this. Nice, small, I know the firearm, it's easy to shoot, there's no external safeties, it's flat so it don't dig into me like a revolver does. Simple, lightweight, easy to carry. That's what you want with your pistol. Now again... I'm not telling you it's a bad idea to load for bear, and if you can do it, great. I can't. No, I can't do that. A, mi a micro 380 is more like what I'm comfortable with carrying. I'll stretch it out to a 45, but I mean, really, a 380 is where I would like to be. Something tiny, not even noticeable. Anyway. I hope this video had helped you out. If you are in a place where you can't have a lot of firearms or your budget's limited, get your rifle, shotgun, and pistol. Shotgun, you're looking at about 200 bucks. A straight up decent AR-15 with your sight and everything, you're looking at about seven, so that's seven, eight, nine. So you're just under a thousand. Your pistol will probably put you up around 1200. Boom, you got everything you need. That is what you actually need. Now obviously want is different. And then there are niche firearms for a specific job, and they will excel at that job. But your general purpose one, just get your rifle, use it all the time. Know that rifle in and out. It don't matter if it's a lever action 3030, a bolt action Mosin Nagant, just fire that thing constantly until you know it like the back of your hand. That rifle's predictable, you know what it's going to do, like me in this scar. I know this rifle. I know it very well. I know what its capabilities are. I am comfortable with them. Me and this rifle go together like peas and carrots. That's what you want. Shotgun, not really so much important. Maverick 88, good to go. Just something cheap. 
You just want to fire 12 gauge rounds. That's it. So if you get stuck having to use that ammo, you have a tool you're familiar with to be able to use that ammo. Pistol, something you're actually going to carry. That's all that matters. If you're actually going to carry it, that's better than most of us. Now, if you actually can carry it and you can shoot it well, double bonus. Shoot your pistol a lot, make sure it works for you. If you can't hit shit with it, then, well, obviously get something else. But just get it so you can hit, like, this size of target at, like, 7 yards, and that's probably the maximum. I mean, yeah, if you can do that, push it farther just to see what you can do so you know its capabilities, but that's where you really want to be able to do it at. Can you hit a target at 7 yards? Okay, good. Can you carry it? Double good. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope this video had helped you out. Like to help support the channel on Patreon right there. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.